we made inquiry of the Adams historians up there in Boston and got total cooperation. Uh, it just seemed appropriate because of father and son, Ad, John Adams, John Quincy Adams, George Bush, George W. Bush. And here it is, and we are so pleased, Mark. Well, we are in the John Adams portion of the exhibit. What are we seeing here, sir? Well, these are originals loaned to us, but this is Abigail Adams, and that's John Adams. Uh, and it's, they were both done by the famous painter, uh, Gilbert Stewart. Uh, there's a George Wa Washington that hangs, I think, still in the Oval Office. It was there when I was there. I believe it, the president still kept it there. And, of course, this Gilbert Stewart is the most famous portrait painter, and we're very privileged to have him here. And there's another portrait here that has John Quincy Adams, which brings in the fathers and the sons. That's Let's right. take a walk here. There, uh, we have all kinds of artifacts here. These are letters uh, written between John and Abigail. This is John Adams' first night in the White House. I know you and Mrs. Bush are big fans of the act of writing a letter. What can a letter do that a phone call can't? Well, I think you can, if you take a little time, you can express the feelings in your heart a little better. Uh, I know I can. I, I, for, I was the guy, they always said English is his, his second <laughs> language, you know, but when you sit down to write, uh, you feel more emotion. And I think that's true of the president. It's true of me, and I expect it was true of the Adams. And John Adams said, uh, always write it down. Always keep a record of what you're doing. This is, as we get to your portion of the exhibit, this is a famous painting, Peacemaker. Why do you love this painting? Well, I love it because it, it hung in my office upstairs, second floor office at the White House. It shows Lincoln with his commanders. Uh, a rainbow of hope in the background towards the end of the war between the states, the Civil War. And uh, I don't know, it just gave me a lot of strength to think that this contemplative president of the United States was going through a terrible, terrible ordeal and that there was a rainbow, there was hope at the end. And so that's what it meant to me. Let's show you other peacemakers. There's other pictures in here. I know uh, uh, this is something that we, you just saw this for the first time today. This is a chess set with oil, uh, oil barrels. That's right. I've never used that, never played on it. <laughs> okay. Let's show you what's back here as well. We have all, all right. kinds of maps and pictures. This is something that was given to you by Mikhail Gorbachev. Mikhail Gorbachev at Malta at the C6 Summit in Malta in the uh, fall, late fall of 1989. And he did this to prove, it's hard to see here, but all these little blue flags are, in his opinion, uh, evidence that we were trying to encircle the Soviet Union. I said to him, Mikhail, what about the Panama Canal? Never mind the Panama Canal. <laughs> and, and anyway, he showed these flags, and it's very accurate. They had good intelligence, obviously, where our submarines were deployed and, and where our fleet was. I didn't, he wanted to have naval arms control at Malta, and we didn't want to talk about that. Uh, let me ask you this. What lessons do you think that your son has learned as president from your presidency? Oh, heavens, Mark, I don't know. I, it, uh, I think, you know, both of us agreed we wouldn't talk about the loneliest job on the earth and the <laughs> burden. So I think one thing he learned is get good people mm -hmm. and delegate and give them credit. And then if you're fighting a war, as he is and as we did, uh, you do the politics, you do the diplomacy with able people helping, then get out of the way and let the military fight and win the war. I'm sure, I'm not sure he learned it from me, but he knows that, and it's a very important point. Here's a portrait here from uh, Ron Cher. I want to show the uh, portrait over here that he did. You did dual portraits with you and your son, and there was a problem there because he kept calling you both Mr. <laughs> it was President. So funny. Came to Camp David, the President said, you got 30 minutes, Ron. And Ron was a little bit, you know, he's a very self-effacing fella. He came there and, and uh, so I, he said, Mr. President, turn left. Mr. President, I said, Ron, it's 41, it's 43. <laughs> you know, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. And a minute later, he's looking at his watch. 41, would you please turn over here? You know. Let's show you this picture over here as well. great artist, incidentally. Mr. President, John Adams uh, pretty much raised his son, John Quincy Adams, to be president. You didn't do that with uh, your son. Here's a picture There's here. There's another Ron Scherer. This one, this was a portrait of the, of the current president, and you mentioned the, the joint one. That's the first time in history that two presidents will be in the same portrait, that pose for the same portrait, because yeah. the Adams did not have that. The D word. We talked about this early. Dynasty. You do not like this word. I don't word. like dynasty. I don't like legacy. I don't like... Certainly entitlement. But when your father is a senator, you're a president, your son is a president, and your other son is a governor, 
How, do, how should we look at this family from your perspective? Coincidence. <laughs> Sheer coincidence. No, we don't, we don't plot. Now, who's going to be next? And, and certainly we don't feel that there's a, an obligation for all my kids to do something. I have a feeling that there's an obligation for them to put something back in, to be a point of light, to help volunteer, but not to run for office. I mean, and George never consulted me about whether he ought to run for president. And... Um, I, nor governor, nor did Jeb in Florida. And this is the last picture that we have here. This is National Cathedral, the day that uh, your son spoke to the nation. What do you remember of that moment? I remember very great pride and I remember great emotion as he stood up and professed the importance of faith and uh, the de determination. Mr. President, thank you so much for letting us in your house, so to speak. Well, There's so much here to see. There and, is. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Well, it's a wonderful exhibit, and we're very proud to have it here. Thank you, sir. Thanks for coming, Mark. You're quite welcome. Jane? All right, Mark, thank you. In Hollywood, the countdown to the Oscars has officially begun with the annual nominees lunch. Person to thank for that. I also want to show you something over here. You saw a movie done by Steven Spielberg. The movie is called Amistad. You remember? Uh, uh, and it was about a slave ship, and they came over to America, and they were defended in court by John Quincy Adams. These are some papers from that era, a map, and some pictures. And last but not least, I want to show you this picture here. This is the first photograph of a president. This was taken after he was president, but it's the first photograph ever. And there's John Quincy Adams looking like, um, he's not too happy. <laughs> but that's a black and white photo. Let's show you what's going on around the country. Uh, in Texas today, a pretty decent day. The sun's coming up, kind of nice here. Out to the east, heavier rain through the southeast and the south. Uh, up and down the east coast, you'll see uh, it'll be damp all day. Some places will see showers heavier than others. Uh, northwest, we'll see a little rain and snow. Colder and still stormy around the northwest for tomorrow. You'll see a little rain and snow mixing uh, around the eastern slopes of the Rockies. Great golf day in Texas, of course. I'll be back in New York. Mild in the northeast, warmer but wet in the mid-Atlantic states and the southeast as well. That's a quick look at the national forecast. Here's an early look at your weather. Good morning from the 27 First News weather team. Notice how this moisture that's over our area is sliding off a bit. That's what's going to happen. It's going to slide right off to the east so that eventually we'll get some sunshine working in here this afternoon. Right now, it's just very, very light and making things a little misty. 34 in Cleveland, 38 in Pittsburgh, 37 in Youngstown. Don's guaranteed high for 50 and some sunshine this afternoon. 27 First News, caring for our community with Anzalani, Sperling, Hazel, and Small. And now here's Janie Jane with the amazing race results. Injury cases personally. Youngstown Microfilm Camera and Imaging is your best source for photographic and video equipment. While other stores have come and gone, Youngstown Microfilm has been in business for five decades. In addition to carrying the best name brands of cameras, they also offer custom photo development at reasonable prices. Compare their quality to what you get from the other guys, and you'll know why they are the experts. Your source for photographic and video equipment is Youngstown Microfilm Camera and Imaging in Boardman and in Hermitage. Tonight, these brothers just want to be together. He needs me to take care of him. But social services is separating them. We can only help Matthew. She's picking the smart kid and dumping the brain damaged brother. Now, attorney Nick Fowler will fight the system and his colleagues. Why are you doing this? For one reason. They should not be torn apart. All new Guardian. Then, did these high school teens... You wrote sexy gossip? ...cause a young girl's suicide? You have killed my daughter! Judging Amy after an all-new Guardian CBS Tonight. Catherine Bosley, Dave Sess, Weather with Rich Morgan, and Libby Jolly on 27 First News, where your news comes first. And good Tuesday morning as we uh, look to brighten your day again with some more warm temperatures. Well, you know, we're hoping to brighten it with that and some sunshine this <laughs> afternoon. More on that coming up. All right, topping our news this morning. Former Youngstown Mayor Pat Ungaro is back in public service. Liberty Township trustees have voted 2-1 to hire him as a township administrator, running day-to-day -day operations for the township. And he starts his work on June 3rd. Now, Austintown Township is changing its government to home rule. Trustees vote unanimously to make that switch. Gives them greater flexibility in governing themselves and even establishing local legislation. Seventeen other communities in Ohio already use this form of government, including Boardman and Howland. 
Another reprimand for Jim Trafficking in court yesterday after he accuses the judge of unfairly restricting his defense. She orders him to stop yelling and start following the rules of evidence. On the witness stand, contractor David Sugar testifies he asked Trafficant to help his son, who was facing a jail term for drunken driving. Says Trafficant managed to get his son transferred to a work release program in Youngstown. Sugar says he then felt obligated to do favors at the congressman's farm. Trafficant says he has physical evidence that will disprove the idea that he took bribes. For the latest on the trial, you can go to WKBN.com or watch 27 First News throughout the day. Well, three military veterans who didn't get to graduate with their class have been honored in Hermitage. And Superintendent Karen Ayanta presents diplomas to David Cusick, Howard Hobal, and Edward Critchko. Now, those three served during World War II and didn't get to graduate with their class because at the time, they were on active duty. Thanks for your service, guys, and congratulations to you. Rich, back now with that Tuesday forecast. And as we get uh, to the bus stop, we see that uh, eh, still some clouds around here. And it might be